Welcome back everyone to another brand new video today. We're going to be doing a stripped down version, classic educational style video today on how you can 3x your sales in Q4. I'm recording this halfway through October. Q4 has already started. You may have noticed many of my recent videos, you know, highly edited. We are just going straight to basics here. Just basically diving into important stuff that's going to help you and your business grow increase profits sales scale everything and these are things that i've learned over the last few years especially in the past sort of two or three years in uh q4 ways that i've tripled revenue even 5x revenue in certain areas so if you prefer this style of video you know something a bit more basic stripped down but highly informative please do drop a comment down below so we're just going to jump straight into this. Email marketing is so important for online businesses, specifically in you know my world of e-commerce. It's one of the most important things. If you're not running email marketing at all, you seriously are missing out. And it really isn't a lot of work at all. Now, just jumping into this, you can see a screenshot I took from my Clavio account. This is my US business. You can see October 1st to December 31st last year. So 2023 Q4. Just from email alone, $465,000 in revenue, almost half a million dollars just from email. And if we just zoom in quickly here, you can see 117K of that came from email campaigns and the other 75%, 350K came from flows. Now, flows are the automated emails that get sent out when certain triggers happen on your website. So if someone, for example, abandons their car on my website and doesn't check out, they'll get hit with a series of emails over a week or so, basically just asking them to come back, complete your purchase. And within these emails, you can obviously offer a ton of different incentives, you know, things like discount codes, free shipping, you know, buy one, get one free, whatever sort of incentive you think that's going to work for your business, you can offer it in your abandoned cart flow to you know entice these people to come back to your business and hopefully place their first order now different flows can be incredibly useful as well you've got sign up flows you'll probably notice this when you go on some of your favorite brands website you'll get a pop-up straight away or within the first 10 seconds or so you know enter your email here you'll get 10 percent off your first order this is something incredibly powerful because not only are you going to be putting these people that enter their email address into this initial sort of sign up flow where, you know, they're going to get hit with a series of welcome emails, 10% off your first order. Obviously, not everyone is going to be purchasing straight away, but the important thing is you have these people's email. You are building your email database that you can then market to, excuse me, at a later date with campaigns. So just because they don't purchase straight away, there's potential down the line and once you master your flows and campaigns you really will maximize the potential revenue you know that you can get out of email and even still to this day i'm getting 25 percent, sometimes 30 percent on a monthly basis of my revenue just from emails now as we are in october a great way to just start this is just plan ahead of time now i've got an email expert running email for me because i like to focus myself on marketing ad creative that sort of thing that's my level of or shall i say that's my region of uh, expertise so i've outsourced my email marketing not because it's time um not because it's time consuming but i've given it a head over to an expert you know he does very well and he's completely turned this around for me but if you are a small business don't think you need to go and outsource it it's something you can do yourself now um Obviously, I'm not going to go in depth in this video on exactly how you set up a Clavio account and things like that. But I am considering making a school community where I go in depth with everything I know about e-commerce and how I've grown my businesses to over $10 million in revenue in the last four or five years or so. It's not something I've made yet. I just want to put a feeler out to see if people would be interested in joining. So leave a comment down below and just yeah, let me know on that. Now, speaking from experience, one thing I certainly struggled with when I managed emails myself is just thinking of ideas. Now, luckily with flows, once you set your email flows up, they're there, they're set. You don't really need to touch them unless you want to just cycle in different products um, or layouts and just split test different things. But the one 
that I struggled with was just ideas for email campaigns. Now, a great way to come up with ideas is go to your email, personal email inbox, go to Q4 last year, just see what brands were emailing you during that time period because you'll instantly get an idea of the subject lines they were using, uh, the offers, the layouts within their emails. Now, one thing I have learned from seeing my email marketing guy send out campaigns on my behalf is you don't want emails that are literally, here's 10% off, here's nine of our products, go and buy one. But you also don't want emails that are so ridiculously long where people lose interest and don't, you know, there's no clear call to action or purpose at all. So you want to sort of find that sweet spot where you've got a good offer, you're showcasing even just one product, but in a variety of ways within the email. And if you are struggling for ideas, honestly, just look what, you know, look at your own personal emails just to see what people or other, you know, bigger brands are sending you. Um, like I said, you don't need to overcomplicate the structure and just make sure all what all flows are working. Because when I, I remember when I first started, certain areas of my flows, the triggers weren't correct and I thought I'd set them up properly, but only three months down the line, I realized they weren't. So even if you have to sign up to your own emails, you know, make an abandoned cart on your website just to make sure these emails are coming through correctly. That's definitely something you want to be checking out. Now, this is relevant to now. I mean, scale what you know works. I mean, for example, my business at the moment, I've tried heavily over the last two months to sort of force another winning product. My business's revenue, 80% of it comes from a specific product. It has a few variations, but it is the core of my business. I've been putting so much time and energy into trying to find, you know, a new winning product to try and scale this Q4. So my attention has been, you know, shifted away from what I know works. I saw a dip in revenue in September because of this and profits started to dip as well because I was pumping ad spend into stuff that, you know, was not proven and just a ton of unnecessary tests. Whereas now I just thought, okay, we we can still test new products on a lower level, but put this budget and scale what I know works because I've, you know, last Black Friday, I did $45,000 on the Friday. I did $45,000 on the Saturday. It's 90K revenue in two days. For, you know, if I looked at that three years ago and said to myself, you know, in a couple of years' time, you're going to do almost 100K in 48 hours, I would have thought, you know, that's ridiculous. But that is what happened. And that is because last year I focused on what works. So, don't overcomplicate things, you know, if you've got a winning product or a product that is showing signs of doing well, just focus on that. You don't need to rush and, ten, and test um, 10 different products at a time. If you're like me and your business has a main product or category of products, just focus on that. And particularly in Q4, when demand is so high, if you've already got people know, if you already have people that know about your product, now is the time to push it because they're already aware and people are just gonna naturally convert better in Q4. There's never not a time to test new products, but in Q4, there is, this is the time to scale. So please do bear that in mind. And that's sort of, you know, something I've learned over the last couple of months or so. Like I said, I saw revenues dip because I was testing too much new stuff at once. Yes, creative test on the stuff you know that works, but don't do what I did and test 10, 20 products a week and just simply waste a ton of ad budget because it's just really not practical. Now I wanted to touch on cost caps on Facebook. I've not made as many Facebook or Meta ads videos in comparison to Google, but I'm sure if you've watched my videos in the past, you'll know that most of my ad spend now, or should I say more of my ad spend now is Meta compared to Google, simply because it's much easier to scale and you can scale a lot quicker. Now, since May or April of this year, I've been using cost caps. And I just wanted to show a couple of examples when you should use them, how you should use them, and are they going to be right for you? So just looking at here, last 30 days, 14th of September to middle of October, this particular ad set within a CBO has had 84 purchases at a £95 per purchase and £8,000 spent. Now, the cost cap for this ad set is set at £89, so, you know, slightly over, or should I say under achieving, but you know, with a product that is high ticket like this or semi high ticket, I can afford £110 cost per purchase to still be profitable, basically. So £95 isn't of concern, very good. And you can see 
it's doing pretty well now uh, again just for a bit of context this is a cbo campaign with five or six ad sets within it each ad set has its own unique target cost per purchase they are all very similar targets to each other because each ad set is a slight different variation of the same product but again this particular product it is my brand's core product it generates most of the revenue but that is how the campaign is structured and after focusing a bit recently on testing more things with my core products i've you know discovered that okay it's all well and good testing a bunch of new copies you know new creatives images videos and things like that i thought let's just try and use what i know works so copy and the best performing ads but direct them to different landing pages now previously all of my ads or pretty much most of them would go to just the shopify product page there's nothing wrong with that i mean it's incredibly well you know it does incredibly well if you just send people to a product page but i thought okay this product has a few different variations you know looks and things like that let's make a custom gem page uh, landing page to showcase all of the different variations in one place it's basically a glorified shopify collection page just with a different graphic at the top a few different sale badges and things like that but took me about 30 minutes to make and that is what this ad set is directing to all of the ads within this ad set are going to the um some form of collection page whether it's the shopify one or a gem page one and you can see it is converting very very well uh, like i said took winning creators from within the cbo made a new ad set just dedicated to collection or gem page landing pages so taking what works and just testing new landers and you'll be surprised when people see fresh content on a new landing page how many more people will convert or move further down the funnel now i use gem pages plenty of other um, softwares you can use if you're very limited on budget just test out your, your standard shopify collection page um and like i said you know this has been going for about a month now performing very well um like i said if i do go through with the school community I will be doing the sort of sessions, uh, live training on things like building out landing pages that convert, but obviously that's potentially for the future. Now, cost caps is the second part of this meta section I just wanted to sort of briefly cover. And you can see here, this is an example of, I believe, Saturday's results. I'm recording this on uh, Monday, the 14th of October. Now, cost caps essentially, you know, there's going to be days where Facebook either don't achieve your goal and when that is the case you'll notice spend just dry up and you know it's not going to spend its full daily budget but on the flip side there are going to be days where you know this serious momentum gathering facebook's doing incredibly well and it might overspend its budget and this is a prime example on saturday the budget was exactly a thousand pounds i've increased it a bit because it was doing well but on this day a thousand pound budget and it spent 1670 so you know what's that 60 percent you know overspend on that day i didn't mind it because you're at 83 pound cost per purchase so on average it was getting less than my target which is really good but i've used cost cap since may some people are going to say you know they limit scale but things like that but at the moment facebook ads are the most expensive i've ever seen them partly due to the election and things like that cpms are through the roof they have been quite inconsistent all year but working with a cost cap just allows that control and you know you're sort of going to wake up knowing okay i'm not going to spend a thousand pounds of my budget with potentially no results or very little results um it's not going to work for every business i've tested it on a couple of client accounts um with my uh, with my google agency we've managed a couple of facebook accounts here and there and one of them you know it never really worked and that's just how it is each business is different each ad account does seem to behave differently um if you've not tried them i mean what's the worst that can happen just just try them but for me i've used them since may um like i said i'm gonna continue to use them throughout q4 because for me i can scale with them you know my daily budget is always being spent at least most days um you know there are a few situations that you might face and have decisions to make now when spend is low you can simply raise your target cpa 10 percent is fine um it's always best to start at a slightly higher target cpa than what you particularly want now let's say you want to get a 50 pound cost per purchase if you're going into cost caps for the first time 
start it at 60 pounds or 65 pounds yes that might mean you're at a break even for example but the higher the cost cap the more sort of breathing room that facebook has to learn in the beginning and if you're breaking even for two weeks and then you can slowly bring your cost caps down that is sort of where you want to be because if you start it too low facebook's not going to spend no data is going to be gathered and it will just be a waste of time because you'll be looking at a campaign or an ad set that has practically no spend and you can't do anything with that information now like i said it's best to start high and gradually bring it down on the flip side if it's doing well like mine have been thankfully for the last sort of month or so if your campaign and ad set is spending its full budget for example here a thousand pounds a day just increase the budget now you can decrease the target cost per purchase but because i've set mine at a nice profitable target i don't need to bring that down more because that will start to limit spend i can increase the budget and increase scale at the same target which is for me the much better option um so you definitely are going to be faced with a few different situations here with meta but you know each to their own if you if you've got some questions about cost caps feel free to drop me a message on instagram because every person's situation is different you know this is just what mine's been like recently um i'm sure if you're watching this and you're using cost caps you know you might be faced with a completely different situation now i just wanted to finish this video just talking about google because a lot of you have obviously subscribed for that now this is more so a mindset thing and sort of a habit thing you want to sort of implement with your you know google account management behavior if you will so like i've said here google is super powerful you know it's great all year round but things do ramp up very quickly in q4 if you've used google for a few years you might notice particularly now i have in my accounts spend is really starting to pick up and i've not really changed too many things now and that's just naturally because demand is increasing I like to prepare quite ahead of time with Google. Facebook, you can scale there and then on Black Friday, increase budgets, that's fine. But, and that's why I put here, Google is more sensitive than Meta. It, it just is, that's how it behaves. Things like changing your bid strategies, your budgets do, you know, they take longer to settle and optimize than the Meta. It's never really worth comparing the two ad platforms at all because they're so vastly different. But for example here, this week i've launched a new standard shopping campaign in the middle of october ready to you know it's given me six weeks or so to prepare for black friday and by the time that comes around this campaign will be running at scale very profitably and if i made this campaign on black friday or the day before that just wouldn't be the case so i'm giving it enough time to ramp up gather data and scale so when the busiest weekend of the year comes around for my business, it is already going to be running at scale. Now, like I said, you want to sort of be be prepared well in advance here. Any target row any target ROAS changes, sorry, you should want, you know, you want to be doing those as soon as possible. Not on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. You know, if you're starting to panic and think, okay, I need to drop my target ROAS on Black Friday or increase it or whichever way you go. It's just not what you want to do. You want to do one final change, which is what I've done across three or four of the campaigns, not all of them. Just things like, okay, I had a campaign running at 250%, for example. I've bumped that up to 300% yesterday. I'm now going to leave that for the rest of Q4 or at least until Black Friday and Cyber Monday is over. And again, similar to the standard shopping sort of thought process, I'm doing this now because a big change like this, it takes a little little while to optimize it might not take six weeks but i just want to give it enough time so by the time black friday cyber monday comes around everything is fully optimized ready to go and yeah that's you know based off past experiences as well sort of making too many changes on black friday and them not really working so if you are a frequent changer on google ads then this is definitely something you want to sort of pay attention to apologies for the noise in the background but anyway, yeah, those are sort of things you could take on board to potentially 3x your sales in Q4. Um, if you've got any questions, either comment or preferably message me on Instagram. I respond to those uh, quicker. Um, and yeah, let me know your thoughts on a potential school community in the, in the comments down below. 
and yeah you know if you prefer this sort of video let me know as well but other than that thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video